In this episode, I'm gonna compare Fingerswim versus Robinhood, two top brokers, and they're gonna go head to head. And I'm gonna tell you which one I think is best, but I'm gonna put it all out there on the table so you can decide which of these two brokers and these two platforms is the best for you. And at the end of this episode, I'm gonna answer the question of what is the real cost of free commissions? Because these are both commission-free brokers, but is free really free? All right, so let's set the stage here. Thinkorswim was founded in 1999. Robinhood was founded in 2013. Both these platforms have been around for a long time. However, when Robinhood came on the scene, they had something that no one else had at the time, free commission trading. But a lot of traders like myself, I disregarded it because it was a mobile app. And I thought, well, gosh, I've been using desktop software. I don't wanna trade on a mobile app. There's no way professional traders who are trying to really make money at this are going to use a mobile app. But as you know, Robinhood started to gain some traction and in fact began taking away market share from Thinkorswim, E-Trade, Fidelity, Interactive Brokers, and some of the others. So much so that in, let's see, it was 2019, Charles Schwab did something crazy. We No one saw this coming. Charles Schwab announced free commissions at Charles Schwab. And within a month, I'm not kidding, within a month, Ameritrade, Thinkorswim, E-Trade, Interactive Brokers, they all did commission free. They were like, if you're gonna do it, I'm gonna, we all have to do it, we have to compete. And suddenly the, the playing field changed. And this was, a, this was a real problem for Robinhood because all of a sudden, you know, Robinhood, people were able to kind of say, well, it's a mobile app and it's not as good as these other platforms, but at least it's free commission. Okay, so now today, with all of these other platforms also offering free commission, is Robinhood, do they really have a viable business model? Is there a good value proposition for you as an aspiring trader or an investor? Well, let's start comparing the features. We're just going to go straight down the line. We're going to begin at the top with the features related just to the platform as a whole. The minimum account size for both of these brokers is zero. You can set up an account today. You could put a penny in, a dollar in. You don't have to even fund the account right away. You can open an account with no deposit, which allows you to get in, look at the platform and start getting comfortable. So minimum account size for both of them is zero. Level playing field, they're the same. The PDT rule. Both of them enforce the PDT rule. They're United States broker dealers. They both will tell you that if you want a day trade, which is more than three trades, uh, more more than three trades in a five day period, for, or four trades in a five day period. If you take the fourth, you're a day trader. You've got to maintain a minimum of twenty five thousand. If you're interested in brokers that do not enforce the PDT rule, I'll have some links down below in the description, and you guys can check those out. But PDT rule, they both enforce it, so they're the same. Price improvement. Now this is interesting because both of these brokers participate in payment for order flow, they are selling your order flow to institutions who then fill the orders and they pay the broker for basically buying your order flow. So they make a profit off of you, off of us. We are the commodity. Remember, anytime something is free, we're the commodity. But in this uh, relationship, we as the traders get price improvement and Robinhood here actually beats. The price improvement for the last quarter was $1.28 for every 100 shares traded, while the price improvement at Thinkorswim was $1.15. So Robinhood here in this category beats out Thinkorswim marginally, but not significantly. It's not incredibly substantial, but it is marginally better. As we already discussed, commissions for stock, free. Both of them are free. Same level playing field here. Commission for options. Robinhood is free. Thinkorswim charges 65 cents per contract. So if you are an options trader, Robinhood is going to be the preferred platform. Although Thinkorswim does have really good option analytics and their platform is easier to navigate for options traders, especially if you're doing complex options like spreads. Well, that's a little tricky. So, you know, again, if you really want free, Robinhood is the place to go if you're trading options. Similarly, both brokers offer leverage, so no difference in that category. And the next is crypto. Robinhood offers crypto trading, Thinkorswim does not. 
So if you're interested in trading crypto, again, Robinhood now wins. Thinkorswim falls short. So does Thinkorswim excel in any of these categories? So far, we're leaning slightly to Robinhood. All right, what about extended hours? Extended hours is the same, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., which means you can't trade from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. That's a little bit disappointing because there are some opportunities in that early morning pre-market session, but both platforms are the same in that regard, so 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. What about retirement accounts? Well, it's a tie. They both allow you to trade in either traditional or Roth IRAs. OTC stocks? Okay, finally, a win for Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim allows OTC trading. All right, well, Robinhood doesn't, but honestly, not that many people are really trading OTC stocks these days. Those are penny stocks, really, really cheap penny stocks. So although the win goes to Thinkorswim, Robinhood doesn't allow it. They're really risky. To, it's risky to trade OTC stocks. So that one for me doesn't really make a difference. The next feature, stock scanners. Robinhood doesn't currently offer any stock scanners. Thinkorswim does, but I don't think they're very good. So I guess you could say the win goes to Thinkorswim for trying, but it's just a participation trophy. They don't actually get much from me in that regard because I don't love the scanners. But let's give Thinkorswim a chance. Here's a category where they really do excel and it's on charting. The charts with Thinkorswim are really terrific. They are really good charts and they have more indicators than you could possibly dream of putting on your charts. So they are really robust on the charting side of things. Whereas Robinhood, they only offer six indicators. So their suite of indicators is very, very limited. And, and that all kind of plays in with a little bit of a theme here. Thinkorswim has a desktop application that you can install and run on your computer. Robinhood is a web app. So yes, you can use Robinhood on your desktop computer, but it's a web app. It's not the, the same as a native uh, a executable file running on the computer. Thinkorswim on desktop is phenomenal. It, it really is an extremely robust platform. You've got level two data, which you do have with Robinhood, both have level two, but you've got a, a really solid platform with these great charts and the option analytics and all that stuff. So the win here goes to Thinkorswim. Now let's talk about on that desktop platform, hotkeys. Robinhood doesn't have hotkeys. Thinkorswim has hotkeys. So you can set up your buttons with shift one to buy a thousand shares, control Z, whatever, to sell the whole position, sell a thousand shares. The hotkeys, they're not as, um, they're, they're not as customizable as software designed for traders. Like, you know, when you see those uh, movies where they're all hedge fund traders, you know, with all the computers, they're not using Thinkorswim and they're not using Robinhood. But Thinkorswim really is a, a perfectly suitable platform, not just for the casual investor buying and selling here and there, but also for the trader who wants to be a bit more active in the market. So now we've stacked up a couple of wins for Thinkorswim. Now I mentioned they both have level two data, but with Robinhood, you have to pay $5 a month and be a gold subscriber to get that level two data. Now $5 a month, they're taking a loss on that because I know market data costs more than that for me, but they're trying to cover their costs a little bit, I guess. So $5 for them. Think or swim, it's totally free. So they take the loss on that. They make it up somewhere else. But yeah, $60 a year doesn't really feel that significant. But the win here does go to Think or Swim. Now, at the beginning of this episode, I said that I would answer the question of what is the true cost of commission-free trading? The fact is, commission-free is not exactly free. As you know, these brokers are selling your order flow to institutional traders, the wholesalers, and they make a profit on every single trade that you execute, and they make billions of dollars a year on this payment for order flow relationship. So you do get price improvement, but obviously the broker's also getting paid and the wholesaler's making money. So it's it's kind of a funny thing. Well, you might say, who really loses here in this relationship? Isn't it just a win, 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 win? Well, something that's kind of interesting, who loses really are the exchanges because the exchanges have different pricing requirements. They price stocks in minimum increments of one penny and institutional traders can split pennies. So, you know, a penny on 10,000 shares is a hundred bucks. So if you split that penny in half or you split it three ways, 
some goes to you, the trader, some goes to the broker, and some goes back to the wholesaler, then, you know, that's a win. And that's kind of what's happening. So maybe the exchanges will decide to change their pricing requirements. Maybe regulators will change the payment for order flow relationship. They've talked about maybe changing it, not sure if they think it's fair. But right now, at the end of the day, retail traders do seem to be winning. Free commissions is great. Institutional traders are winning and the brokers are happy too. The exchanges, I think they're feeling the squeeze as the market moves more and more off the the main primary trading venue because that's the thing a lot of these orders are routed internally at that broker and they never actually come out to the main market so it's kind of interesting but in any case i i think that between these two brokers i told you that i would tell you which one i think is best and you might have already guessed it i for me it's think or swim they edge out in a couple of categories now you're it's true that robin hood does give you slightly better price improvement but Robinhood, it, they, they don't have hotkeys. They don't have a desktop platform. It's very simple. So I, I think that it's good for people who want to trade crypto. You do get a little bit of price improvement, but Thinkorswim is a much more robust platform, both in mobile and on desktop. The charts are far superior. The hotkeys are terrific. You know, it, you pay a little bit in the price improvement, but it's it's not a lot. So I think for a trader who is more active, you're going to be happier with Thinkorswim. Robinhood, I'm concerned that their business proposition, their value offering is just becoming less and less compelling compared to these other brokers who have gone commission free. So if I was going to go head to head with the two of them, I would choose Thinkorswim. But there are some reasons why I could see why you might choose Robinhood. If you're thinking about using Thinkorswim for day trading, make sure you check out this episode on the three settings you have to enable. That's a deep dive on the platform. And I'll put another recommendation here of a video that YouTube thinks that you would love. So check that out and make sure you stay tuned for the next episode that I upload here real soon. Thanks again for tuning in.